Hello, welcome to the news at 10 on NT News 24. We're live in Abuja. I'm Comfort Amadu. Good to have you join us. Now, the headlines. Nigeria aims at diplomatic end to Israel Palestinian crisis. Uh, whatever the reasons are, he, he, he thinks that uh, uh, both countries need to de-escalate. They must come back to the negotiating table uh, so that at least for the, uh, you know, let's have some uh, peaceful resolution. Communities in neighboring state denounce female genital mutilation. National Drug Law Enforcement Agency smashes cross-border drug trafficking syndicates. We begin with Nigerians' effort uh, to end the crisis uh, between uh, Palestinian uh, Israel and Palestinian crisis. As President Bola Tinubu is in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, apart from to improve uh, economic ties between Nigeria uh, and the country. And now, State House correspondent Musba Nawahab were joining him, who spoke out with the minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, in Arabia on expectations from the meeting. Nigeria is a very uh, important country, not just in Africa, but uh, uh, on the global stage. Uh, recall that Nigeria uh, is the biggest black nation on earth, and we have a very close proximity with the, with the Middle East, and, and Nigeria has had a very long-standing relationship uh, with not just uh, 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 countries around the world, but also the Middle East. Now, re recall that um, uh, last year, as you said, uh, precisely on the 11th of November 2023, um, the President was here uh, at uh, Africa Saudi Summit, which also had the uh, Africa Arab Summit. Uh, the issue of Palestine then very fresh. Uh, the conflict between uh, the Palestine and, and Israel was very fresh. Nigeria participated. And in that summit, it was agreed that uh, there must be uh, a de-escalation of, of the conflict and return to, uh, to the diplomatic table. Uh, now, one year down the line, we have seen the kind of uh, thing that has happened uh, in Israel and in Palestine. Um, we have seen the kind of uh, 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 loss of lives and destruction of uh, property that uh, everyone around the globe is, is talking about. And so when this uh, summit was muted and Nigeria was invited, uh, President Bola Ahmed Chinubu, consistent uh, with his thinking about, uh, you know, being very humane, um, he is a very, very uh, a humane leader. He looks at the issue of humanity very seriously. Uh, whatever the reasons are, he, he, he thinks that uh, uh, both countries need to de-escalate. They must come back to the negotiating table uh, so that at least for the, uh, you know, let's have some uh, peaceful resolution. Whatever is the case, this conflict can never end on the war front. We must come uh, to find a diplomatic solution. And this is exactly what, what, what we are seeking here. And back home in Nigeria, the presidency has advised the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, to deploy his energy and skills into playing the role of a statesman after his uh, popularity was put to test for six times in the race for the presidency of Nigeria. In a statement signed by the special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Bayo Onanuga, the presidency says former vice president lacks contemporary knowledge about national and global economies and gullible to fallacies which are delusional and uh, hypocritical. The statement added that Atiku is still battling with the shock of defeat when he should brace up in joining hands with the Tinubu's administration, which is running a reformed agenda that is promising and has proven to provide a gradual and permanent solution to Nigeria economic challenges in both oil and non-oil sector. 
and stop being blind to some of the major strides achieved. Bio Onanuga says the 5.4 trillion Naira recovered uh, from the subsidy removal is being channeled into meeting critical developmental needs and assured that reforms to activate the four refineries, support modular and uh, Dangote refineries is in top gear, while workers' welfare is also receiving a boost, as seen from the implementation of a new national wage. He urged the former vice president to hide his head in shame following series of corruption charges against him and his family and allow the president to focus on the task of reconstructing the economy. His party, the PDP, destroyed for more than a decade. A German ambassador to Nigeria has called for an increased focus on vocational training and skill acquisition as critical components to strengthening Nigerians' uh, economy. The German ambassador who spoke on improving economic ties with Nigeria emphasized that uh, Nigeria has strong track record in vocational education, which could serve as a model for Nigeria that will enable the country to build a more diversified and skilled workforce. Particularly uh, vocational training, you know, skills development. That is uh, an area where we are very much uh, engaged both for Nigerians who want to find their jobs here, but also for Nigerians who might want to go and work in Germany. And also, the growth of the economy is very important for the well-being of the population, for the improvement of the socio-economic situation of all Nigerians. But this, econ this growing economy also needs skills, needs trained workforce. So I think this is where we can come in. Germany has a very good experience in uh, vocational training, and we are doing already a lot. There is more potential to do that. There are German companies who are already involved in our programs of vocational training. But this is, I think, where we can really make a difference. Nigeria and Germany historically have strong trade relations with Germany, being one of Nigeria's largest trading partners in the European Union. The main exports from Nigeria to Germany include oil, gas, and agricultural products, while Germany exports machinery, vehicles, chemicals, and industrial goods to Nigeria. Visit uh, last year, and uh, His Excellency President Chinubu's visit to Germany, where he visited also a big um, uh, business conference. I think since then we have seen a, a very strong uh, increase in German companies' interest in Nigeria. We get many requests. We have many companies here, about 90 to 100, who are mostly trading, some are also producing. Uh, I always like to use the example of Nivea. German companies already active in Nigeria. There's significant potential for further collaboration in this area to foster economic growth and reduce unemployment. Now, the White House Adversary Council is working out modalities to make it easier for diaspora members to go beyond individual remittances and participate in pooled investments, partner with local entrepreneurs, support small and medium-sized enterprises, and invest in larger development projects that will foster sustainable economic growth in Nigeria. Executive Director, President, uh, Joe Biden's uh, advisory council on African diaspora engagement, Laurent uh, Mante, stated this at the plenary presentation at the close of the 7th Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit in Abuja. Deborah Balagbubu reports. Executive Director of President Joe Biden's Advisory Council on Africa Diaspora Engagement, Laurent Mantle, says the summit aligns with its mission to bridge gaps in communities, create pathways for investment, and amplify the influence of Africa Diaspora while commending NITCOM for a successful summit. She reaffirms PAC AIDS commitment to building robust platform and partnership that enhance the diaspora impact. The African diaspora is one of the most dynamic, innovative, and committed communities within the United States. This community continues to con
contribute to the United States through entrepreneurship, education, healthcare, culture, and public service. So we're glad with the um, initiatives of the um, American African Diaspora Council under this administration, and we look forward to working with the council and thank the U.S. government. We want to work with you. We want to build this country together. We want to ensure that, you know what, Nigerians at home work with Nigerians in the diaspora to build this great country of ours. Nidcom Boss reaffirms the Commission's dedication to creating partnership that leverages on resources, skills, and aspirations of diaspora for Nigerians' advancement. She further expressed hope for ongoing collaboration that will build economic resilience and create job opportunities across Nigeria. The seventh NDIS, which lasted three days, had as its theme adapting stability through diaspora investment, navigating the path of prosperity. In Abuja, Deborah Balagubo, NT News. Minister of Trade and Investment Jumoke Oduwale says the government of Nigeria is dedicated to enhancing digital infrastructure across all state parties while emphasizing the importance of robust personal data protection provisions to foster trust and uh, to foster trust and prevent cyber crimes and fraud. This was at the 15th meeting of the African Continental Free Trade Area in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Jumoket says Nigeria acknowledges the significant strides made with the protocol on digital trade, which offers pragmatic rules designed to drive digital transformation across the continent, that the protocol is set to bolster the growth and utilization of African digital platforms and computing facilities by African-owned small and medium enterprises within state parties. The minister believes that the, sim the simplest operationalization of the new protocol will serve as a catalyst for economic development by increasing trade, creating jobs, and reducing poverty, as well as optimizing the industrial structure of the continent. News at 10 is live on NC News 24. More stories ahead. Stay tuned. The government signs deal for aircraft maintenance facilities as Central Bank of Nigeria says all imports crashed by 35% in the second quarter. Takpa Labri reports on these and other developments in the business space. The federal government, through the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace Development, has entered into a public-private partnership arrangement with a private firm to establish a maintenance, repair and overhaul facility for aircraft. The new facility would operate as an approved maintenance organization, AMO, under the regulation of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. AMO, approved by the NCAA, is meant to perform specific aircraft maintenance activities, which may include the inspection, overhaul, maintenance, repair and or alteration and release to service of aircraft and aeronautical products. Following through, you see in Nigeria, the policies are always there on paper, but the political will to follow through has been the problem. 
In Festus Kiyama and Captain Chris Najomo, we do not have that problem. The facility, the first of its kind in Nigeria, aims to meet growing maintenance needs for aircraft operating within the country, which currently often require expensive and time-consuming trips to foreign maintenance centers. Don't the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace you know, Development, Festus Kiyama, had in August revealed that he had concluded plans to initiate the bidding process for the establishment of maintenance, repair and overhaul facilities in the country. According to the minister, the move was part of the government's effort to enhance the country's aviation infrastructure and reduce reliance on foreign MRO services. In the meantime, Nigeria's oil imports dropped by 35% in the second quarter of 2024, amounting to $2.79 billion, down from $4.31 billion in the previous quarter. This is according to the quarterly economic report of the Central Bank of Nigeria for the second quarter of 2024. This reduction highlights shifting dynamics in the nation's oil and gas sector amid ongoing structural and economic adjustments following the removal of fuel subsidies. The report also noted that the overall value of merchandise imports also contracted, falling by 20.59% to $8.64 billion from $10.88 billion recorded in first quarter of 2024. Persistent challenges such as oil theft and vandalism in the Niger Delta experts say remain major impediments to production stability. With business news, Tokwe Alabi. The spate of vandalism on power infrastructure in the country continues as the transmission line along Lokoja Wagulada has been pulled down. A statement by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, states that three towers along Line 1 have been vandalized, disrupting bulk power transmission along the route. The vandals also stole two spans of aluminium conductor from the Line 1, though a double circuit line. TCN assures that it is still supplying bulk power through Line 2, while efforts are underway to replace the aluminium conductors for the two spans stolen from the Line 1. TCN describes the rising trend of vandalism on transmission lines and towers as threats to the country's power infrastructure and hindering the expansion and stability of the national grid as it again appealed to communities hosting transmission lines and towers to collaborate with its security uh, and operatives to combat the menace. After months of intelligence gathering and painstaking surveillance, operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and DLA have smashed two major cross-border drug trafficking syndicates with cocaine and opioids, what billions of naira recovered from them while six leaders of the cartels were arrested in different parts of the country. Mwanda with Salwaki Ibrahim. It was the end of the road for leaders of the syndicate, known as Notorious, for their cross-border activities. They were arrested at different locations across the country in possession of different types of psychoactive substances, including cocaine and tramadol, concealed in vehicle parts. Meanwhile, NDLEA operatives in Apapa Seaport, Lagos, on Wednesday, 6 November, intercepted 31,750,000 pills of Voltron, a controlled opioid package and concealed in a container imported from India as diclofenac tablet. At the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Port Shed, Ikeja, Lagos, NDLEA officers intercepted a 700 grams consignment of loud. A software engineer who showed up to collect the package was promptly arrested and a follow-up search of his home in Lekki led to the recovery of some drug paraphernalia, including cannabis crusher. In Abuja, NDLEA operatives in the Federal Capital Territory on Thursday, 7 November, intercepted a truck along Abadi Ukwali Road with 755.50 kilograms cannabis concealed 
sealed under empty cartons of noodles. Discoveries and arrests were also made in Kaduna, Kanu, Edo, Plateau, Kwara and Ondo State during the week under review. These include war against drug abuse advocacies across the country. In Abuja, Salwa Khalil Ibrahim, NTA News. The component of Operation Fansan Yemma has initiated a series of intense independent air missions to support the armed forces of Nigerians' renewed drive to eliminate all forms of criminality in the northwestern region. It's focused a campaign of air interdiction, nicknamed Operation uh, Faratour. Uh, Mujia kicked started with series of high impact night operations deep within the stakeholders of notorious uh, bandits across Zamfara and Kebi states. A statement by Director of Public Relations and Information Air Commodore Olushola Akimboyewa indicates that the first wave of strikes was launched following confirmed intelligence about increased terrorist activities in areas identified as strongholds of notorious bandits, warlords who had long terrorized the local communities using advanced surveillance and precision, targeting NAF assets executed. A surprise aerial assault on multiple camps, including strategic uh, Sangeko location in Zamfara. Zamfara State, near the Kebi border and Ado Alero's heavily fortified enclave around Ashola Hill in, Saf in Safi local government area. That's in Safi local government area. Intelligence reports and battle damage assessment confirm the overwhelming impact of the strikes with several kidnapped victims escaping amidst the chaos, making the way to safety in Kebi State more updates on Operation uh, Faratua uh, Mujia will come in the days ahead. Uh, livestock farmers are beginning to witness a new dawn as a new Minister of Livestock Development, Edi Mokhtar Meha, has hit the ground running with community engagement to chart a new course for modern animal husbandry. Mohamed Umar Ajinge reports. <laughs> These communities have every reason to roll out drums to give a man they consider one of their own a rousing welcome. To rejoice with him over his recent appointment as the Minister of Livestock Development. It was an engagement between the host communities and their August visitor in the month of November. The idea is to take a look of their common occupation of livestock farming with a view to opening a new chapter in modern animal husbandry. So we believe that if we do the necessary that needs to be done in terms of the reforms is envisioned by the Mr. President, the GDP contribution from the sector will quadruple in the not distant future. To do that, we have to invest and create the necessary conditions in the grazing reserves to attract and incentivize herders to remain there by providing all the necessary amenities that a modern animal husbandry requires. The minister led the people into tour of various Fulani settlements for a study tour where he demonstrated what he has been practicing for a very long time. Disappointment. Uh, I hear people say is is when you say round uh, peg in a round hole. I think it fits it perfectly. And not even that. The passion he has for the livestock industry uh, that shows is exemplified with this farm that he has set. He's been resilient. He's been persistent. He's going to come up with new innovations which he has tested in his farm and we've seen the results. The minister's investment in the livestock sector for more than 30 years here has turned dreams into realities with the children of the Fulanis who once left their villages to sell fraud and nono in distant town now getting buyers at their very doorsteps. <laughs> This one behind me, called Bula, has the capacity to produce 50 liters in a day. He has been interacting with the Fulanis for so many years, and uh, he had he even made an NGO. He organized an NGO for the Fulanis around this area. 
all their milks, their milk, they milk their cow, they will bring it here and we will sell it out for outside and we credit them with their money. We know he's going to deal with this father's, farmers and others problem. He will sort this thing out. As the music continues to hit the air, the dancing cycles widen, calling everyone to join, including myself, a moment that speaks to my own Flani heritage. Elsewhere, residents of uh, Calabar Metropolis uh, on the 9th of 9th November 2024 will not forget in a hurry uh, the rainstorm which occurred that fateful night that brought sorrow, rendering some people homeless and also destroyed the aesthetic of uh, outlook of parts of the city. Paul Abel is currently uh, visiting some of the affected uh, sites and he will bring us an uh, update on this development. As the rains recede, it comes with storm, thunder, and lightning in southern Nigeria. And the 9th of November 9th, 2024, in Calabar was a night of disaster. A move round the metropolis showed the devastation on public and private buildings as the civil defense complex was not also spared. ICT admin, MT arms command office, uh, anti vandal offices, Savicom, the gates, even the auditorium, they are all affected. Coming to the site, I can see the enormity of the damages that have been done to the headquarters in the first cycle of the Western states. Um, honestly, to be able to assess the damage is just to make an understatement. The aesthetic outlook was not spared also, including ornamental trees along Utala Mohammed Highway, Good Shepherd Monument, school buildings, falling electric poles also in Calabar South, restricting movement of people even till the next day. It was good though that helped us. We were just at the scene when everything was happening. The rain was so heavy. The best we can do is just remedy, remedy the situation, just clean up the environs and possibly we should start planting trees that have a deeper tap root closer to the road. At 6 o'clock we were already on the street and uh, cleaning up everywhere and then walking and then putting, uh, restoring the city of Calabar back to its own natural green and clean. The people are optimistic that government will take proactive measures to foresaw the occurrence of the destruction to the metropolis. In Calabar, all able. NGA News. We will take another break now. More stories ahead. African Women Conference has conferred on eminent Africans Gender Equality Champions Award in recognition of their firm commitment to women and girls' well-being, especially the vulnerable. At an award uh, to climax the African Women Conference Zambia in Lusaka, gender advocates amplify adoption of digital education and empowerment in realizing the African transformation agenda. Ulushe Adiago captures sites and sound of their word. <laughs> The African Women Conference Zambia 2024 has been quite engaging and exhilarating. Now it's time to recognize voices that have recently clamored for the cause of the African women. <laughs> Celebrate the achievement of those who have made significant.
significant stride in this for the co-convener AWC, Dr. Jumi Amadio, and others. The continent is with policies already, but feel it's time to match words with action. As we conclude this year's conference, let us carry forward the momentum we have built. Together, we can harness our potential, create an Africa where every woman is empowered and succeed. The quest is to also transform Africa to the base of gender equality and the roaring voices behind this, especially the Nigerian Television Authority with its Director General, Salih Abdulhamid Dambos, taking the Media Champion Award. Every year, the NTA has been out here and um, he has supported us and um, the work of women empowerment um, all over the country. That the way the world is going today, we need everybody, you know, leave no one behind. It means for concepts of this nature, projects of this nature, we all must put our best because for all our benefits, if the woman does well, it's for humanity. Well, I have to appreciate the organizers of this one. To think about the rural women, but we've been advised on the ways in which we can bring these products to the market through we that have the phones and internet. I expect delegates to go back and become change agents, become igniters of more digital inclusion for women. African Women Conference Next Generation takes the button to organize the next edition. And it is an exciting moment for these champions who get inducted into the AWC Hall of Fame. Zaga in Zambia, Ulushaye Adiagbo, and Tinees. Twelve autonomous communities in the South local government area of Ebony State have denounced the practice of female genital mutilation in their land, owing to its inimical effects on the girl child. Fortunate also reports that the denouncement publicly done at Unweki General Hospital has made the state 75% free from the practice of female genital mutilation. For more than one decade, foreign agencies in partnership with successive state administrations have identified Ebony State as one of the states in the country where female genital mutilation practice is endemic. Despite campaigns exposing dangers of FGM and domestication of a legal framework known as Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law, VAP, the practice still persists in parts of the state. But it seems there is a light at the end of the tunnel, as many communities, having realized the dangers inherent in the ugly practice, have in recent times declared their decision to abandon the practice. The most recent of such declarations was that of the 12 communities that make up Eza South Council area of the state. Eza South NG of the Bay State have recognized the immediate and long-term negative health consequences of FGM. It is our conclusion that FGM is not and cannot be of any benefit to our people and community. Representatives of some partners in the fight against FGM said there is no going back until all communities in the state publicly denounce the practice which has been identified to be inimical to the girl child. That we are conducting today, it is very symbolic. Very symbolic in the sense that about 12 communities, I understand, are declaring abandonment of FGM today. It simply means that the that women and girls will no longer experience that harm, those consequences that are attached to the practice of female genital mutilation. Stakeholders in the health sector, community leaders, as well as traditional rulers promised to enforce the declaration in their various domains as machineries have been put in place to monitor compliance. FGM is not just a harmful practice, it is a violation of basic human rights, imparting the physical and mental well-being of countless girls and women across generations. We must make sure that our women get their freedom. 
and uh, uh, to have their happiness in future. Leaders of the 12 communities were presented with certificates and signposts to mark the declaration. In Abakaliki, Fortunate Ozo, NTA News. In Nasser states, the government is placing premium on the development of technical education to harness manpower for the growth of its critical sectors. Governor Abdullahi disclosed this at the first public lecture of the State Polytechnic in Lafia. Ali Tijani was there. Making President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's renewed hope enterprise in all facets of the country's developmental fronts as success requires digital literacy. It is on this premise that the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, through its pet project, National Digital Literacy Framework, which is aimed at developing digital literacy and skills into Nigeria's formal educational system, as well as ensuring inclusive participation. At NIDA, we designed this digital literacy for all initiative. We started with developing the national digital literacy framework with an ambitious target to achieve 95% digital literacy by 2030. The future of jobs will change by the year 2030. And what it means is that it will require digital skills. Uh, for anyone to be able to operate in a digital economy. Vice Chancellor, Nasrallah State University, Kefi Professor Saad Tuasan Liman expressed optimism that the initiative will have both academic and economic benefits. We have flagged up the digital literacy program in collaboration with NIDA and Cisco. It is of great benefit to the university. The world is evolving, and if you are not part of what is happening now, then that means you cannot communicate. These giant strides by the agency through such innovations, if embraced by Nigerians, have the potential to make the citizenry move side by side with the digitally evolving world. From Kefi, Blessen Namfulani, NTA News. I was blessing uh, Dan Fulani there, not uh, Ali Utijani on that report. And one of the biggest hurdles for students trying to access tertiary education in Nigeria is funding, while some are able to provide for themselves. Many are juggling the stress of tuition fees and daily expenses. Now, that's where the Nigerian Education Loans Fund steps in, offering the crucial needed support to ease students' uh, burden. In the special report, uh, Vivian is here if he takes a look at how the fund works and how it has benefited some students so far. In Nigeria, going to university isn't just about making the grades, it's about overcoming serious financial hurdles. Many students juggle classes with part-time jobs, leaning on family or friends for help. Despite their best efforts, some still watch their dreams fade due to lack of money. But in 2024, President Tidibu signed a student loans bill into law, giving a much needed boost to students and their families. And had the vision that regardless of this economic hardship that we're facing in this country, this was always going to come because of the lack of education that uh, our people um, have, have been deprived of, or the education, should I say, that our people have been deprived of. The new loan scheme is being held as a game changer. It's designed to ease the financial burden and make sure students don't have to give up on their education just because of money. Take the University of Ibadan, for example. It's one of the schools benefiting from this scheme. Recently, the National Education Loan Fund released um, a, a sum of about 201 million naira to the University of Ibadu. And that's only catered for about 1,370 um, students. Um, you know, initially there is this apathy by students uh, to apply for the loan. Parents are feeling the relief too with tuition fees no longer being such a heavy load. We are very much grateful about it and we hope it will help them, inshallah, to see that they have really done their best. And now that you have got this assistance from the federal government, I advise you to make sure that you use the opportunities available to you and study very hard because if your parents cannot do it, here is another. Um, factor that the federal government has decided to help you. 
However, the real excitement is among the students. Although many haven't accessed the funds yet, there is a real buzz on campuses like the University of Me degree. Without this assistance, I don't think we can continue with our academic career. Um, I really want to thank the government for um, initiating this student loan into the current in situation we're facing in right now as students. Um, presently, um, I haven't gotten mine yet. Um, I think mine should be processing all this said they are still processing ours. And the application process is a pretty straightforward. A few clicks on the website and students can get the support they need. So how is the process? Uh, the process is simple. If you go to the website nelfon.gov.ng, then you put in uh, your name, your school, you choose your school, then you put in your matric number. So then uh, after it brings out your details, then you proceed to put in your uh, other details, other uh, your jam. No, uh, match, uh, jam number, the jam registration number. Sorry, and uh, after jam registration number, to take you to where you put your BVN and your account number. After the verifying your BVN with your name, then you go and apply for the loan. And it's not just about giving out loans. It's about building skills that help students pay back what they owe in the future. At the heart of it all, this loan scheme is more than financial aid. It's a lifeline. It turns aspiration into achievements, making sure higher education is within reach for all, no matter their financial background. In Abuja, Vivian is Adifi. The electoral process in Nigeria has seen significant strides with new innovations and greater transparency. And ahead of the forthcoming Ondo governorship election, a symposium has held in Abuja to deliberate on areas of improvements with a view to further strengthening how elections are conducted, especially going forward into the 2027 general elections. Dennis Adegunoye reports. Since Nigeria's return to democratic rule in 1999, the country has had several elections from 2003 to 2023, with the off-cycle elections also coming into play. In recent years, there have been significant efforts to address various impediments to smooth electoral processes, including the introduction of biometric voting systems and the deployment of international observers to monitor the electoral process. At this symposium, organized by the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought, and as part of its Deepening Democracy series, attention is focusing on the strengthening of institutions, in this case, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the need for it to be independent in the truest sense of the word. We say that you must have a system of electoral management that is clear, transparent, where results can be determined and the clarity of those results are established so that everybody knows who has won. Deliberations also interrogated issues surrounding how systems cannot operate in a vacuum, but rather are most effective when the right people are at the helm of affairs. Electrical relationship between individuals and institutions. And when we have this interconnection, they strengthen each other, they rub off on each other. That's why sometimes we have very strong, determined individuals being able to change institutions. How do we conceive power in such a way that the man who exercises and wields power will sit in the public, you know, in the public interest. If you go to collect money at a POS machine, you get a receipt, true or false. That printer becomes your ballot paper. You have that ballot paper stick into the ballot box. After the election is over, the polling is over, we tally both the electronic and the paper, the ballot. When it agrees, you send the one electronically. If our judges decide to wear the garb of judicial activism, I believe they will be bold enough to dispense justice and not judgment. A multi-stakeholder electoral board, and that should be the resp it should be the responsibility of that board to first of all, at least primarily, nominate or select, and only recommend what you have selected to the presidency to ascend to. We need again to focus a lot more on the political parties and their capacity, willingness to comply with the rules. 
A national action plan is expected to be formulated with a view to full implementation to foster greater public confidence in the electoral process going forward. Dennis at Digun Lui, NTA News. You're watching the news at 10, live on NTA News 24. Here's a quick look at our major stories. Joint Arab Islamic Summit, Nigeria seeks diplomatic end to Israel Palestinian crisis. Uh, whatever the reasons are, he, he, he thinks that uh, uh, both countries need to de escalate, they must come back to the negotiating table uh, so that at least for the, uh, you know, let's have some uh, peaceful resolution. Nigeria reaffirms commitment to digital trade protocol. Power cuts looms as Vandal pulled down Lokoja Guagulada transmission line one. State uh, Governor Duyadiri has described the flood uh, situation in Bissini community in local government uh, council area of the state as pathetic as hundreds of families are now displaced. The governor who visited the community to see the level of uh, the flood and its impact on the people also assures that uh, the state government will secure higher ground to build shelters as a way of ameliorating uh, their suffering. Timinipri Ohia reports on this. Bias state is made up of 13 communities, and oftentimes communities there are always the first ports of call and flood, and one of the worst hits every year. This time around, as the flood beckons, the main access road has also been overtaken by the rising waters, leaving the creeks as the only source of access to the communities. Governor Doye Dewey, alongside his entourage, journeys through the Taylor Creek to have a first-hand information on the impact of the 2024 flood on the agrarian communities of Bissini clan. We thank God that we have not heard about uh, death of anybody from this community. And so uh, when we assessed the flood in the state, uh, so far, Bissini is the most impacted across the state. Some people's houses, like Touch House, failed due to this uh, water disaster. Those areas close to the river, most of those areas are also impacted. But uh, we want to appreciate the government for, through the Agency for Flood and Erosion Control, a lot of canals were opened up. So this year, in Agua, the state capital is not as impacted as it was in 2022. So we want to appreciate the government. Highlight of the governor's visit to the flood-affected Bissini communities was the donation of 100 bags of rice and other relief materials to be distributed to the flood victims. Iyenogwa, Timinipri, Ohia, NTA News. Sanford State Command of the Federal Road Safety Court says active participation of passengers in traffic management will prevent accidents and promote a culture of safety in Nigeria as uh, the command launches the 2024 Ember Months Awareness Campaign with a town hall meeting in Gusso, the state capital. Haliru Mohammed reports from that area. The town hall meeting which attracted various stakeholders focused on sensitizing the general public, particularly passengers, on their rules in ensuring road safety. The campaign with the theme, Speak Up Against Dangerous Driving, Crashes Kill More Passengers Than Drivers, featured presentations by various experts who maintain that all hands must be on deck to reduce road crashes. Count the number of deaths from malaria, cholera, and many more that it is. There cannot be a total, annual total of the deaths arising from road traffic accidents. Most of our people are familiar of taking drugs. 
The State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure, who was represented, described road safety as a collective responsibility. The Sector Commander of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Tijani Iliasu, noted that the campaign is aimed at empowering passengers on their responsibility in preventing accidents. So this year we change it. We now decide, let us talk to the passengers. Because we discover that if a driver dies, before one driver dies, at least five, six, seven passengers will die along with the driver. That is why we have the, the theme of this year. It's more driver, more passengers passengers die in a crash than a driver. Various stakeholders who delivered goodwill messages also emphasized the importance of passengers' involvement in road safety and review of traffic laws to promote safe driving practices and reduce accidents. In Gusau, Halir Muhammad, NTA News. Oh, let's uh, bring you a uh, development with COP29 beginning in Baku, Azerbaijan, with countries around the world uh, meeting to address the rampant uh, climate change uh, crisis, uh, holding each other to account and examining the role they are playing to limit global warming. Charles, our first report that without uh, the conference of parties meeting regularly to devise ways to fight climate change, humanity reports that... Uh, would be headed uh, towards fire or five degrees of global warming with energy bills going up even the more. Executive Secretary of the UN Climate, uh, Simon Steele, in his opening remarks, believe countries will be economically uncompetitive with further global instability costing prestigious or precious lives if nations don't act fast. Charles Alpha also reports that a focus in Baku will be on getting the international carbon markets up and running by finalizing Article 6, move forward on mitigation, while nations must not let uh, keeping temperatures well below 1.5 degrees sleep out of each. Other areas will be on clean energy and infrastructure investment, as well as the shift to clean energy and climate resilience. Countries will look at adaptation indicators to increase resilience and improve new mechanisms for financial and technical support on loss and damage. And to support countries in creating and communicating this, the UNFCC will launch a climate plan campaign to mobilize action from all key players and align with the efforts of the United Nations. We'll bring you development from uh, the summit there. Uh, the Director General, Nigerian Television Authority, Salu Abdul Hamid Dembo, says all members of the organization are deeply saddened by the loss of Joy Osiago, a cherished former colleague, respected reporter, and accomplished newscaster. In a condolence message to the family of the deceased, the Director General notes that Joy embodied the spirit of journalism with her unwavering dedication integrity and passion he says she brought to her role not only an exceptional talent for storytelling but also a deep sense of responsibility to the truth noting that throughout her career joy's professionalism and commitment set a high standard inspiring both her colleagues and viewers alike with her voice a trusted source of news her presence, a steady guide during pivotal moments in the country's history, she remains etched in the foundation of NTS mission, the DG says. He extends heartfelt condolences to her family, friends, and all who had the honor to walk alongside her. Praying that her soul rest in peace, her family and comforting uh, rest in peace and comfort in knowing the profound impact she had on the field of journalism and the lives of countless Nigerians. Now let's bring you development.